Good morning, everyone. I'm Nikki Stanzione. And I'm Elias Gallegos, in for Kristen. And this is New Mexico Style. You said your name great. I did. I, I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> I, I've gotten better. Can I teach everybody what you taught me? Yes, please do. Okay, so remember the first time that he was on the show? You may remember this if you hate me for it. I said his name wrong, okay? I think I said, Eli I think I said like Elias Gallegos. <laughs> <laughs> I learned my lesson because New Mexico hated me for that. So, I, I, obviously the guy goes, I got that down. Easy, easy breezy. But the first part, the alias, I wasn't sure about, right? right? So he taught me this brilliant way to remember because he knows I'm a music girl and I love the music. So I said, he says to me, you know Aaliyah, the singer Aaliyah who rocked the boat, rocked the boat. Yes. Worked, right? Okay, so he tells me, think of Aaliyah and just add the sound at the end. Aaliyah. And, it, and that was the end of it. Now I never get it wrong. Da -da. So yes, I'm Elias Gallegos. <laughs> I think. Again, you said it great. <laughs> it's Monday morning. What can I say? So how was your weekend? You were busy. I was busy. I was all over this great state. I was at the state fair on Saturday. I saw the parade and that was a lot of fun. Got a little rain. So there were some tough souls uh, endearing. The, it was a little <laughs> chilly, but it wasn't bad. Yeah. And then I was really excited because yesterday I got to go to Moriarty, the airport up in Moriarty, and I got right. to fly a Cessna airplane. With a really, really cool pilot by the name of David Suits. So you're working on your pilot's license? Yes, it's something I've been working on for, cool. well, since Top Gun came out. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has the Maverick jacket, I have to be honest, I saw it. That's right, Ice yeah. Man. Oh, I see. Yeah, you know what? That was the best movie, I have to say. If, you, if you're if you too young to remember the Top Gun years, just rent it. Seriously, that movie is so good. It's timeless. It never gets old. So when you're a when you're like fighter, fighter pilot, you, you think you can really achieve the whole Tom Cruise thing? I don't think anyone can fully achieve the whole Tom Cruise thing, mm -hmm. but um, I, it's, it is my dream to go <laughs> ballistic. <laughs> don't go ballistic. Just just do a good job. We don't want any accidents in the air. Or at least do a flyby by the tower. Oh, that would be cool. And then the person drops their coffee. I love that. That's fun. So, and then yesterday, I saw you at the fair. I saw Nikki at the fair. After your flying expedition. If you guys, I mean, Nikki's awesome in this show. Oh, she, she's not amazing. But yeah. I got the chance to see her on stage with some amazing people here from the station. John Elias, who does amazing. promotional commercials here. Amazing drummer. Excellent drummer. Nikki on vocals. It was it was a blast. Day. It was a lot of fun. Yes, thanks for the support. It was really, it was a fun day. Um, so yeah, the next time we play, we'll let everybody know you come out and see us. It was fun. Okay, so now I have another story for you. Listen to this. A 42-year-old Dutch woman has been charged with stalking her ex-boyfriend. Okay, now there's different levels of stalking, right? I mean, I think so. Well, in this case, prosecutors say she called him 65 thousand times last year that is ready here's let's do the math 178 calls a day now is that a problem i don't know well she says they're dating and so she argued the calls aren't excessive and he says they have no relationship <laughs> what do you think about I, that i don't know who to believe well do you think that's excessive 178 yes. calls a day yeah i think three calls a day is a little excessive really oh then we can't be friends i probably have a <laughs> no seriously i this is the thing this is what struck me about that when i read it if you are in a relationship, you tend to feel like you have more leeway, I think, right. in calling or, you know, if you hang up and you you forget to say something, you call back. Or if you can't find somebody, you call a little more repetitively because you're trying to find them mm -hmm. in the relationship. When you're not in a serious relationship, I think you're more apt to say, oh, I forgot to, I'll tell them the next time we talk. Or I'll talk to them when I talk to them. Or I'll email them. Yes. Something. Right. So in her case, she's saying because she was in a relationship, it was okay. Now, clearly 178 times is excessive. <laughs> Just a little obsessive, maybe not even excessive. What do you? I mean, as a guy, what does that make you think? Uh, it makes me think about buying running shoes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk to Karen about that. Now, listen to this. Back in New York, a 290-pound man is suing fast food chain White Castle. Love White uh, Castle back in the East. We love it. Yeah. Now he can't fit in the seats. This is what's happening. Now here's a picture of the guy. Let's take a look at him. Okay, hi there, mister. I don't know his name, but this man claims White Castle promised to make changes to the seats, but that was two and a half years ago and nothing has been done since. Not very nice, right? A White Castle spokeswoman says the restaurant would have provided a regular chair if he had just asked. Oh, well, perhaps maybe he should think about walking to White Castle? <laughs> Perhaps, with your running shoes, maybe. <laughs> but no, honestly, I mean, I think that's unfair. I think it's unfair when, they, when they're when they building restaurants or they're building 
whatever, whenever they're making these decides, everybody's a different size, tall, short, big, right, but whatever, right. it doesn't matter. And there should never be that feeling of embarrassment for somebody, whether they're too tall or too big yeah. in the stomach or whatever. I just, I think that's unfair and I do think something should be done about that to make things more friendly for the diversity of our of our culture and our to people. To appeal to everybody, sure. Right? I right. think so too. I mean, you especially, you probably can't fit in anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fit in my uh, old football, high school football jersey, I really? don't think. I don't know. Well, were you bigger or smaller? But I used to be much taller. Oh, he used to be taller. So you shrunk very young. <laughs> Another Hollywood actor, by the way, being rewarded for bad behavior. On Saturday night, uh, you know, on Saturday night, celebrities were poking fun at our, uh, one of our favorite people to talk about, Charlie Sheen, of course. Uh. He had quite the roller coaster year, to say the least. And among Sheen's many highlights in 2011, he was fired, you may remember, from yes. Two and a Half Men. You may also remember he then went on a public rant against the show's executives. <laughs> Take a look. What makes Charlie Sheen the perfect person to roast? I, if you if 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 you pick up any newspaper from six months ago, I, I guess it would have to be six months ago. It's really we've kind of been out of it for a while. But you know, I mean, what hookers, drugs, uh, Wall Street. <laughs> This poor guy had a year. She says he's done with the coin phrase, winning. He winning. feels he already won. What do you think? Um, well, I would say the game's not over, but I like Charlie Sheen. Yeah, I do too. I mean, this is what's going to happen. You, we're going to see that roast air the same night that we're going to see the premiere of Two and a Half Men on KRQE. So it'll be interesting what, uh, what the viewers want to see more. Do they want to see Charlie roasted or do they want to see the replacement of Ashton, your friend Ashton Kutcher? All right, my good pal. Who you know. <laughs> yes. Now, let's talk a little bit about the weekend box office because uh, neither of us actually got to the movies this weekend. But top honors at the box office actually went to Contagion. That, Scary. That looks like a freaky movie yeah, a little an bit comfortable movie but Freaks i'm sure matt damon's awesome so i'm pretty sure it's he he is but you know the whole <laughs> yeah that was a good movie that the outbreak was good now this is i think this is going to be even more on the uh serious side as far as what could really happen to our nation mm -hmm. if there was some kind of a virus let out now despite the star-studded cast this opening weekend showed the most dismal numbers for a debut this year earning a little more than 23 million dollars even though it was first now other box office numbers the help which is supposed to be amazing was knocked to second place after holding the top spot for three weeks and warrior starring Elias <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> opened in third place rounding out the fourth and fifth spots were the debt and Colombiana Colombiana looks pretty good have you seen any of those movies at all? Um, Colombiana, I, I've been following that since the pre-production oh, phases, really? and it's I, I like those action movies yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with multiple cameras and elevated angles, all that stuff. Just like <laughs> the show, just Good like the cinematography. Mexico style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So yeah, so well, I want to see the help because I heard the help was really, really good. It's up for like, they're talking Oscar already about yeah, that. Yeah, it, so. it's it's probably one of those films. It's yeah. a great story. Yeah. So we'll see what happens next week. And I think the reason this weekend was probably so slow was because people really wanted to get out and about and just kind of honor 9/11 yeah. in all the different ways it was being done this weekend, whether it be just even watching TV or whether it be getting out and about. So now this is an interesting thing. Speaking of getting out and about, we've had a number of certain service dog organizations on the show and you recently tried to get your own dog in that program so how'd that go? Well it's, it's a, a tough act to follow and um, I, do, I do have a clip to show you Okay. but keep in mind the majority of these dogs that they, they, they start as puppies so mm. please don't think less of my, my cute little dog. Okay. Berkeley. Berkeley? Today's your big day. Are you ready? Today's the big day for service animals. Well, you ready? Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on.
one we're going to do is say your dog's name. Your dog should give you immediate attention. Okay, Berkeley. So what you're going to do is you're going to walk with a goal. And what that means is you're going to walk towards Nico with a loose leash. Um, when you get within six inches of the food on the ground, you're going to have Berkeley lay down. Berkeley can't go and eat any of the food and has to lay down on the first one. Ready? Uh-uh. Leave it. Leave it. You're fine. Okay. Okay. The work we do benefits so many different groups. Um, we have kids classes that help kids, we help folks with disabilities, and um, the dogs that we choose for this work are also dogs who like to do this work. In a typical day, how does somebody reach out to the Assistance Dog of the West? How, what, what's the, the starting process to, to become um, a customer? Uh, we call our customers clients, and uh, if you had a disability and you were interested in getting a service dog, you'd make contact with the office, and we have an application process, which is fairly rigorous, because what we're looking for is everything that happens in your life and in your environment to make certain that the dogs that we are training can help you. For more information how you can help out and be a local supporter, go to www.assistancedogsofthewest.org. Oh, Berkeley's cute. He is a really cute dog. I love him. How do you do? So did so he? Have well, he. Well, as you saw, he he failed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what I what I took away from that that whole weekend is there's many levels of of service animals and mm. every animal, whether it's a goldfish, a dog, or even a gorilla. Yeah. Gives some sort of service and to the person it changes their lives and for many people who are lonely, you know, your your little dog. You, when you get home, it's it's always nice to come home to somebody. Aww, that's nice, that's nice. Now, of course, when we think about our pets, we often think about what's going on outside so they can get outside and enjoy the weather. So let's take a look at what the weather forecast will be. Let's do Shall that. Shall we?